Good evening, folks. How you all doing? Let's see who's in tonight. Oh, we got a small crowd today. So hello to Poker Papa, Primus, Chimera, Talal, Telepool, and the bot. And we're going to kick off straight away. So we're going to be going back into the stuff we started last week. Oh, can someone give me a heads up if audio and video is coming through okay? Um, I think everything's behaving this time, but we will see. Barry looks good. Um, yeah, we're going to just carry on with the SSAO stuff that we started last time. Um, we've left in a really dumb place. We're like, we left everything broken. So, um, thanks, Teleport. Um, yeah, we're just going to... Yeah, we left everything broken, so we've just got to get something working here. Our first step, really, is we need to do the kind of deferred... Like, what do they call it? The geometry pass, but a really annoying name. But yeah, we need to populate our G-buffer. So it's our G-buffer pass. This is the deferred shading tutorial, but we are on this one. And for those in those playing the home game, you can have that link there. Um, so yes, we need to populate uh, view space positions, uh, view space normals, and this was, I can't remember what that was. Uh, not important to us right now is what it is. Oh no, that was their um, uh, albedo color that they put into a buffer as well. Right now it was all white because they set it to that earlier on because they wanted to highlight, they wanted to show just the shading that's being added, um, just the texture that's being added by the SSAO. So we're going to carry on with that. And yeah, there's not really much to do except dive into this. So where do we get to? I'm just looking down here. I've got... Keppel started. Um, if I can just bring up a REPL, we can run CLS, and this area over here is blank. Um, um, like, there's no main loop running at the moment because this uh, graphics code, does, the, the uh, GPU code, doesn't compile yet. So, this stuff is fine. And I think all of this stuff here is good. This is good. And we get down to here, and this is the stuff where we've got fix me's. So the first problem here is, oh, of course, yeah, fix me, dumbass. Um, we, it's saying about model to view is undefined, and I'm using that there, and that is correct. That is not a matrix we have available, um, but we want to get to the model to view, so we're going to do the same thing as we did to get to the view pos with the normal. Um, we're going to take the... Um, Let's take the model to world matrix, multiply the normal uh, by that, which is in, um, come on Chris, get my head in straight. Um, that's in model space, so this is going to get this into be the world space normal, and then we're just going to do this into view space with the um, world to view matrix, and hopefully then that will compile. Okay, so that function's alright. Um, this is the common function we're using from our vertex stages. This is what we're going to pass on to the next stage. We're going to pass the clip pass as the uh, GL position. So that's going to be taken and the rest are going to go on to the fragment stage. So that's the uh, fragment view position, the normal, and our UVs, um, which have been corrected for things. I can't remember what we do with those. Um, oh yeah, we're just taking this and mapping it in from the minus one to, what are we? no, what are we doing? Oh no, sorry, I'm not even reading, that's the problem. We're just flipping the Y coordinate. Yep, that makes sense. Um, what now? So yes, this is gonna go on to our fragment stage, which is down here. Um, so we're getting the view position, the view normal, and the UV, and we need to populate this stuff. So the view position, that's fine. I think we're going to rip out just about everything from here. So let's do that. Let's get rid of everything down here. And we're just going to work out what values we're returning. So the first thing we're going to be returning uh, is that view position. That's cool. Um, we're going to be passing down the view. Originally, well, we need a, a normal that's in view space. But... I want to understand what's going on here because originally we're passing through some we're passing through some normal from the vertex stage 
And luckily last week I saved the original rendering code in another file just so we could refer back to it. So I'm gonna look through here and see what we had. Um, okay, so we had a world normal. That was what it was. What, do we, what did we do with that once we got it into, into here? It's a shit name, by the way. Let's see if, uh, <laughs> let's just change that up for a second. World normal, bam, bam. Okay. Okay, so we normalized that. And then we never used it by the look of it. Because it looks like we just took a normal straight from our from our normal map. That's interesting. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, oh no, maybe we did. No, no, we replaced it down here. Okay, this is interesting. So norm from map is used here. It's transformed by our uh, tangent by tangent uh, normal matrix. Now, are we gonna want that again then? So if this is not used, that's cool. Hey, Jace, how you doing? Okay, so yeah, we don't really need to worry about this and thus we don't need to worry about this guy being passed in at all. So this bit here we can remove, but this might still matter to us because if we want to use stuff from our normal map, then we probably care about this. Um, Let's look at the norm from map function and see what we've got here. So it reads from the normal map at the UV. Um, yeah, and just constructs our, yeah. So it's basically just unpacking that. Unpacking, remapping, normalizing, flipping the Y coordinate because that's a very common thing you have to do in normal textures, um, depending on what software is outputting it. Um, okay. So then we're going to be very interested in this TBN matrix, or we would be if we knew where that was coming from. Where did it used to come from? Okay, that used to be passed in with everything else, so it's coming from that common chunk up here. Now that's interesting. So What about if we do this in view space instead? What if we cr construct this matrix, but we do it in view space, and then we transform that normal we read from the normal map? Then we could transform that normal into view space as well. Um, that's probably the thing for us to do, which means we don't need that normal that was passed in. Well, where are we looking? Da, 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 da. Yeah. World normal was here, but we never used it, so it doesn't matter. But if we have UV, normal map, and TBN. Okay, let's let's try that. Let's take this code. Do we still have that around? Dun, dun, dun. No, it all got thrown out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of view norm entirely. So don't care about that. If I can just make sure it's not used anywhere else. No. And world norm we just created to create that. So we can get rid of that as well. Um, and we're going to resurrect this stuff. Which, to be honest, I'm just going to trust is correct. Because we had we set this up when we were doing the normal mapping episode. But I don't remember exactly um, the construction. Um, but it'll be okay, I think. So we're doing model to world here. Um, I guess we're going to want to do the um, world to view transform as well. Get it into view space. Let's do that on all of these. This might even be correct. Who knows? Um, and then we're going to take this TBN matrix. We're going to shove it in our outputs. And yeah, we're going to kick that straight over to the other, um, to our fragment shader. So let's go down there and modify the inputs because now we don't have this view norm, but we do have uh, a TDN matrix, which is a map three, if I remember correctly. Map three, yes, good. Um, and now we've got this. 
let's clean some things up here. So our albedo, we're taking out of our albedo map, we're gamma correcting it, and we are going to write that as one of our outputs. So let's put view norm down here, which is not gonna work yet, and albedo. So those are our three outputs that we're expecting. It's gonna fill this stuff here. So view post, view norm, albedo. Um, then let's have a look. We're not doing anything with time. We don't care about that. So let's go get rid of. Uh, we'll leave now in the uniforms because who cares? It'll be fine. Um, normal. Okay, this is going to be view norm is now TBN times norm from map. Let's bring this down to be with it. So things are vaguely grouped in the sensible places. So albedo, ambient, and this is all lighting related stuff, which we are not doing in this pass. So fuck you, you're gone. And we're just down to the albedo and the normal. And that's cool. So I think we compile that and try and compile the whole file, which is gonna fail. Cause it's like, fuck you, what have you done wrong? Okay. Um, yeah, this is not happy. Could not find a GPU function. Frank stage, yeah, because we've changed the signature. So let's look at that. It's VEC3, MAC3, VEC2. Um, cool. Compile. Nice. So that's done. So we've got something that at least compiles here. We can crash it in a minute and see where we go. Um, what do we do to old render? I just want to make sure. Oh yeah, we renamed frag to world normal. Eh. Do we want to save that? It does make it a little bit easier to read. So yeah, let's um, tweak naming of old code args. Um, and yes, now hopefully, so render seems to compile again. We'll come back to that soon. Bring up the REPL, bring up the main loop. So play with verts dot lisp. We still got an ASD file open here? Yeah, we do. There we go. So each time the game steps, what are we going to do? We're going to get the internal real time. We're going to get the time delta. We're doing some shit with it there. Um, we update the camera. We grab the current resolution of this area. We are going to call the thing to populate the G buffer, which should be um, yeah, we draw all the things and that's going to use those shaders we were just talking about and that should populate that G-buffer. So what, all I'm hoping for now is like we don't care about any of this stuff. Um, I just want this file to compile. I want to be able to start this thing going, which doesn't look too promising right now. What the fuck? Oh yeah, of course, it's going to be loading in the meshes and stuff. Um, that looked like an error, but I fucked it up real fast. Um, here we go. Okay, so the out outputs from one stage are not compatible with the inputs of another. Vec4 map Vec2. Oh, that looks wrong. One second. Let's go back to render again. Um, yeah, I was expecting a Vec3. That is not what you'll be getting. One thing to check, actually. Our uh, FBO, our G buffer that we're making. What's that target? Oh yeah, it's effect three. That's interesting. Yeah, good to know. Okay, ignore that anyway. Um, so yeah, now we just need to go to render and fix up what I did wrong. So I've put that I'll be getting a VEC3 here. So let's just go up here and fix this. So let's just swizzle this to XYZ. And we're good. So now, um, it's not a really easy way of showing that this thing is actually running, but we'll go with it anyway. Um, let's see if we can do something. Let's go look at our G buffer, because I want to remember how this thing is put together. Um, well, we've got samplers, so that's perfect. Let's take the position sampler from that. So we'll do slot value. 
cloth sampler, cool. 320 by 240, that's a shit size. That means we need to recreate everything. Um, let's just do reset. Let's check that out again. That's looking a little better. 368 by 783 is probably this space. Um, assuming that got populated, we should be able to go down in here and do a little um, debug rendering. So let's do draw texture this and see what we get. Hmm. <laughs> well, it could be valid, but it's pretty hard to tell. That's a little better. Um, that's the thing, everything being in view space, it's going to be pretty hard to see the, uh, the differentiation there, but that's all right. Okay, so we seem to be populating things anyway. Um, so these, these are our positions. Apparently you can kind of kind of see the, a little bit of a discontinuity here where the um, font probably is. Uh, what's the other thing? Norm sampler. There we go. Hey, that looks good. Okay, so these are our view space normals. Let's hope that's vaguely correct. So I think we're populating our gbuffer okay now. So let's put that in here. So uh, we'll just replace this. Populating gbuffer, because this is a more useful commit anyway. All right. This is when we need Metian to be here today. Jason saying, is chat really quiet today or is it just you? No, it is not just you. Yeah, it is quiet today. There's less of us here as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's a Mayday thing or what, what's going on. Oh no, there's a few people here. There's actually quite a number of people that I don't recognize. If any of you are... There could be a few people from our little raid last week. If, if any of you are from the... Um... Oh, what's the chap's name? I, I checked out some of his streams. The dude is doing like Haskell and Python and... PHP and all sorts of of stuff on his streams. That guy's a beast. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know what raids were until just after I got raided. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? Why are you people here? But um, if any of you are around from last week, shout out because uh, it'll be cool to chat. So. Telepool, if, if you want me to go into anything, do let me know because I know I'm just kind of rambling away here and because all this is new as well. Arsis, it is good to see you. Okay, so we've got our inputs now. This is dope. And by the way, the reason we've got this little border is that's just something that draw text does. Oh, wait a second. The current hints. Um, you can see here that it has a scale of 0 0.9. I occasionally found this useful just to be able to recognize that, hey, I'm, I'm rendering just a texture because it, it could get quite easy to, like, Render one of the attachments of an FBO and have it in the full screen and then look away and think and then look back and think that that was the actual output from my from my whole pipeline and go, why does this look like shit? Where's my lighting gone? So just by having it a slightly different size would help. But what we can do um, is we can just do scale one. And, um, and that's not the language we're writing right now, Chris. This isn't C sharp, thankfully. Um, let's, uh, whoop, there we go. So... Yeah, that, that's uh, full screen, but that's why we've got those little bands around the side. So, um, oh, cool. Glad everything's groovy, Teleport. Keep me posted. So, right, where do we get to in this tutorial, essentially? Um, we had gone through. This is setting up. Yeah, this is setting up textures for the color buffer. Um, let's have a look through here. We haven't done this stuff yet. This is about the floats themselves. Wait a second, let's have a look then. Oh yeah, I think the chat that made this was mentioning they were using that old deferred rendering code, like a slightly modified version. So a lot of things there are going to be, yeah, a little different. Let's just see, because I thought they had one of the shaders in here for the like the for the geometry pass. Which was like here? No. Is this to do with hemispheres? Here. Okay, yeah. So and here's one he's not doing um uh, normal mapping. Um as far as I know. No, we're just taking the uh, normal coming from the vertex stage. 
uh, which is here, sorry, that's their outputs. Um, the view space position coming in here, the texture chords, and they're just setting their albedo to be a constant color, which is why that picture up earlier was white. Why am I pointing with my finger? Here is white, uh, because of this 0.95 here. Um, so normalize, did we normalize our normal? I don't think we did. Let's just go and check that. Should be fine, but never hurts to do it again, except performance. Um, okay, so I think that's all right. That looks roughly like what we're doing, but we're doing a little bit more. Ah. <sighs> want to make sure of one thing. Since SSAO is a screen space technique where occlusion is calculated based on the visible view, it makes sense to implement the algorithm in view space. Okay, yeah, that's just justifying that decision. We're already there. That's great. This is about setting up the buffers that things are being written into. Um, let's have a look at this. So the position was a 16-bit floating point. I think we went for 32 in ours. Not render. Play with that. Go back up here. Just reminding myself of everything because it's, yeah, it can be a lot. G buffer. Yeah, let's go and have a look at our position, our texture. Yeah, we went for 32 bit floating points. Um, we are doing, they're gone for RGB. Again, we've gone for, um, yeah, we've gone to RGB as well. So this is a VEC3. Um, VEC3s we're storing in here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's fine. And we're doing, again, our sampler. If we just jump back here, our sampler is doing clamp to edge in all three directions. Um, three, because you can have 3D textures. So that's fine. So that accounts for this stuff here. And the min and mag filter are nearest. So minify and magnify filter here are set to GL nearest. So that is all right. So we've got the same setup as them, essentially. Neat. Now we get onto the hemisphere stuff. This is fun. OK, so we're going to need to generate a number of samples or oriented along the normal of a surface. We talked about this briefly yesterday. Yesterday? No. I'm a bit washed out with this light coming in this window as well. I'm going to pull this curtain just a tad and see if that helps. Um, or it could just, ah, oh, is it just that this camera is setting itself again to automatically screw with everything? Yes, it is. Let's turn off auto everything and suddenly <laughs> it looks slightly better. Okay, let's try that. Maybe again we can have light. Yeah, we can have a world. Hooray. Um, awesome. Okay, so last week we talked about the fact that for each point, um, for each uh, fragment essentially, but we're saying each point that is visible um, in our screen space buffers, we're going to create this little hemisphere, this imaginary hemisphere, and we're going to pick a load of points within that hemisphere. And if any of them are behind, um, are further away than the depth buffer says they should be, then we're going to say that it, they are inside some geometry and therefore contribute to some occlusion factor. Remember, this is not, um, yeah, it's not based on, like, it's not a physics-based calculation. If you look at some of the PBR stuff that we're actually trying to create, like, um, the physically-based rendering, that is, uh, we're trying to pick some physics calculations, like the using the real kind of, um, kind of photometric um, equations. We're trying to simplify them down to something we can do in real time and bake a load of values off and stuff like this. This is not one of those techniques. This is just based on, eh, you know, if we did this, it would kind of give us a good estimate of what's in a corner. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Little hemisphere, random sample points, count the ones that are inside some geometry for our definition of inside geometry. And we'll say, okay, the more of them there are, the darker this bit needs to be. Um, and so, um, we are doing some of that. So let's have a look at this. 
Um, da, 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 da. This is on CPU side. This is about generating random floats. Okay, so let's go through this again. Assuming we have a unit hemisphere, we can obtain a sample kernel with a maximum of 64 samples as follows. Get a thing that's going to generate random floats between 0 and 1. Um, set up a vector for the results. Loop through for 64 points. Generate random things and then remap them between the minus 1 and 1 range rather than the 0 and 1 range. Um, normalize those which pushes them up to the surface of the hemisphere um, and then multiply it by a random number which is going to then pull them in again so we yeah we create all the points we push them out to the surface of the hemisphere and then we scale that distance by some random number which means now they're inside the hemisphere yeah somewhere I also think this is like we talked about this last week, but I'm pretty sure this is going to give us biases towards, because here we're generating a random point in a cuboid, and then we're just using normal to flatten them down. I think this gives us clustering around where the corners of the cuboid will be. But again, it's not going to matter enough, because this this version of the technique is an old Crytek version. Uh, like, well, it's, it's an old version of SSAO. We're going to look at some better ones in the future as well. But let's just um, start making our little kernel. Let's dump some code down here. And C++ code and just write something similar. Um, so we need um, to generate, let's just do a C array. So gen um, kernel points. So num of points. And that's the number we're going to take in. Then we're going to create ourselves a, a result array, um, which is going to be make C array. Uh, the initial contents are going to be nil. The dimensions are going to be number of points. And the element type is going to be vec3. Um, that's cool. And then we're going to go and loop for i below the number of points. Let's move that down to a new line for formatting results. Let's do, oh no, actually we can start with for x uh, equals random 1f times, whoa, fuck. Do this, y, z. Yep. And that's going to be our vec. So let's just say for v equals um, x, y, z. There we go. And now we've got that, what are we going to do? We're going to normalize it. So we can go like this v3, normalize. Um, and then we're going to scale it. So v3 multiplied by some scalar, and that scalar is going to be random 1f, um, and that counts for this bit. And then we've got scale. Oh yeah, we generate this variable, but this isn't actually used yet. So then all we're doing is we're going um, set f RFC of our result array and I, and we're setting it to B. That should be it. Let's have a look. Gen kernel points 64. Cool, we got 64 of those. And let's um, pull G that to see what they are. Those look like random numbers. We can tell that at a glance because we're liars. Um, that's cool. So we have some sample points. This is one of those places where you really need something like uh, Mathematica. So you can just say, give me a graph of that. 
Actually, it'd be nice just to have a library for that in general. Matty Ann, good to see you. I've been doing loads of commits for you, man. If you can follow along. AK Karam, good to see you. I need some coffee. So for those arriving late, chastised, how dare you? But what we're actually up to is we have um, changed the rendering code. So we're spitting out view space positions, normals, and um, our albedo into our G buffer. So that's working and we're seeing the normals on screen here, which is cool. I can probably move around and it'll look kind of dope. Woo! Nice. Um, and then, what are we doing now? Yeah, we're generating the kernel points that we're going to use for our little hemispheres. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. So it's kind of cool. And I've done it wrong. Look at this. Um, our Z position shouldn't have been remapped. We just needed it between 0 and 1. So, oops. Kernel point, 64, blah, blah, blah. There's our VEXC. Our CRA, rather. That's good. OK. What do we need to do with that now? Um, currently all samples are randomly distributed not quite in the sample kernel but we rather place a larger weight on occlusions closer to the actual fragment as, uh, as to distribute the kernel samples closer to the origin um, we can do this with an accelerating interpolation function this so um, They're using this mathematically inaccurate lerp function. We're not going to use that. We're going to use one that is correct. It's not going to hurt our um, our equation at all. This seems to use the scale value that they mentioned up here. So let's go and dump this down here and see how this fits in. Um, OK. So yeah, let's, um, naming's a bit weird, but sure, for S0 is equal to I divided by um, number of points. And both of those are going to be ints, though. So actually, we kind of want, um, not that, um, kind of want number of points to be as a float. So let's do that. Oh, ah, fuck it. Stop trying to optimize. Float. There we go. And we want it to be a single float. So like that. Um, hey, cool stuff from the um, release this week. Uh, the SBCL release. Um, they've added this thing now, which I don't have the latest SBL, SBCL on here. But normally you can write things like, yeah, like 14 F0 and this is a float and stuff like this. You're going to be able to write 14.3R. Um, or R0, I think it might be. And this is going to be computed as a rational instead of a float. So 14.3, uh, like, or so if they, let's do a simpler one. 0 0.3 is going to be, yeah, 3 over 10, um, which is really dope. There are, there are cases where this really matters. Actually, it, it's funny it came up because I've been dicking around with something the other day. Obviously, Joe Armstrong passed away recently. And um, he's, again, super interesting bloke. And I was rewatching some of his talks. And he showed this really lovely example, which wasn't from him, but again, it just came up in one of his talks, as, and I thought it was kind of cool. Um, let's have a look. Rationalize decimal reader. So, this is um, by a chap called Rump, and I can't remember his first name, but he came up with the fact that he pointed out that if you have this equation here, and we say, for the sake of example, that x is this number and y is this number. Then if we compute this, actually, bring back, if we compute this with 32-bit floats, we get this result. And if we compute it with double precision, so we get a double float, we get this result. But the correct answer is negative. Both of these are positive. We're not even in the right fucking place. Um, and that's kind of embarrassing. And um, one of the things is, like, common list, we have proper rationals. So if we write these numbers, um, yeah, if we if we're to write some of the parts of this um, as rationals, like the three point the three 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 point seven five is this, 
Um, if we write that, we actually get the correct result, which is dope. Um, we get this, which is this as a float. And that is correct. But it was kind of annoying that we had to go through and change these into rationals. Um, because sometimes the fact that something is a 0.25 or a 0.75, notation can be useful for make, having realizations about what you're looking at. So I thought it was a bit of a shame we had to change the notation to convince the machine to give us the right answer. And so I went and added a little reader macro, which is this one, hash percent, um, which will take the decimal. It'll read it as a decimal and then convert it into a rational for you. Um, and it's kind of cute and it just means that this which is very similar to the original um, thing up wherever it was. Um, yeah, very similar to the original not, like code actually gives the correct answer because now you're definitely working with rationals. But this is actually built into, um, it's gonna be built into SBCL now. Um, it came along with another feature I wasn't so stoked about, but uh, it's kind of neat. So yeah, thinking about that. Um, Arsus, why is that lerp mathematically inaccurate? It was just, it's, the, the, I'm not the right person to explain this, but um, it was to do with floating point precision. It's less stable at certain parts of the range, and I don't entirely know why, but I know that's not what GLSL uses and things like that. Everyone else uses, there is a different LERP function that's meant to be a bit more stable. And um, yeah, that's what RTG Math provides instead. And yes, yeah, so we will be using that. But seeing as we're just looking at lerping between two values correctly, then I think that's going to be okay. So our S0 is this divided by number of points as a float. Um, uh, I just can't stand it. Anyway, ignore it, Chris. Sorry, four. And then what are we going to do? We're going to um, S1 because he calls that scale as well. Y um, is going to be uh, just lerp which we do have a start and an end in the mount. Uh, the start is 0.1, um, the ending result is one. Let me just put an F0 here, because I like doing that. Um, and it's scale squared. So yeah, times F0, S0 gives us the new scale, S1, cool. Um, yeah, so now we're here. And now we're going to multiply our sample, so that's after this bit, I guess. So this is our, so this is V, so let's make this V zero, since we're gonna fuck around with this some more. Oh no, actually, let's not do that. Let's just do a multiply here, and times this by S1, that should be correct. And then we're done. Then we push it into the results, and that should be our points. Neat. Okay, so that diversion aside, where were we? Down here? No, here, right. La 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 la, we do the biasing, where lerp is defined as blah. This gives us a kernel distribution, this, which samples close to the origin, fine. Each of the kernel, kernel. Each of the um, kernel space program samples will be used to offset the view space fragment position to sample surrounding geometry. We do need quite a lot of samples in view space in order to get realistic results, which might be too heavy on performance. However, if we can introduce, introduce some semi-random rotation slash noise on a per fragment basis to this stuff, we can significantly reduce the number of samples required. Cool. Random kernel rotations. Okay, so now we are, let's have a look. This is their noise. All right, we'll do this too. So this is by introducing some randomness on the sample kernels, we largely reduce the number of samples necessary to get good results. We could create a random uh, rotation vector for each fragment of a scene, but that quickly eats up memory. Makes more sense to create a small texture of random rotation vectors that we tile over the screen. Oh yeah, this is our four by four little array of stuff. Let's just go and do that quickly. We're just gonna make these things. So defun, gen, weird noise. Um, weird nose, weird knees, 
Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> uh, let res is going to be a make uh, make C array. Our initial context is nil, and the dimensions are 16, and the element type is a vec3. Can we do it on that one line without it looking shit? We cannot. So we'll make it shit on two lines. That's fine. Um, then we're going to look for, let's see what's going on here. So, Median, are the commits pushed? Yes. Good. Um, I will be pushing these la these next two functions over soon, just as we, just soon as we know what we're doing with them, just in case I've fucked up somehow. Let's have a look. Oop, I below sixteen. Set f error of c. Previous I, and this is going to be. What am I doing? There we go. Same deal as up here by the look of it. Float between 0 and 1 times 2 minus 1. Why didn't I just do a float between 0 and 2 and minus 1? That's much better. Let's let's do let's do that. Really, really doesn't matter that much. I don't know. We're just asking for trouble here, but oh well. It's slightly better to look at. Hurrah. Um, yeah, so we're doing that for x and y, and then we got 0. Um, and that's that. Oh, of course, we need to return res from this function. And we're good. Gen weird noise is written. OK, and now it wants to make a texture out of that. Um, I'm going to take this. Ours is going to be way simpler than this, but let's look at this anyway. Um, he found gen weird noise text. I'm going to say with C arrays freed. Because we only need this thing temporarily. Um, we have the C array, which is gen weird noise. And then outside the scope, it's going to be gone again. And then we're going to make a texture where the initial contents are that. Didn't, didn't they want this to be a... Yeah, I mean, seeing as this is just completely random noise, why not do this... Okay, we're changing this slightly. Dimensions, uh, four by four. Right, and then we're gonna do an, um, an A ref. Is it row major A ref C? Yeah, totally. Okay, so we can do this. Um, so then our C array that's gonna be returned is already four by four, which is nice because then all we need to do is pass it in here and it's gonna be a four by four um, texture ready to go. So we don't need to pass in dimensions, they're going to be taken. We don't need to pass in element type. Um, but we will actually, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Vec3. This is a 16-bit floating. Again, we're going to use 32-bit because really it's not going to hurt us. For this simple example, we could tighten it up later if we wanted to. RGB floats. Um, they're pulling the value from SSAO noise, which they generated, I guess, up here. Um, And yeah, then they're setting the sampling parameters to be nearest and repeat. Okay, so let's do that. So let's do let's star. Actually, we don't need let's star. Let's just call this sample. Uh, this is just text. Doot, doot. And we're just going to sample this. Sample text. Um, our default wrap is already set to repeat. Um, maybe we'll do that anyway, just to make sure sure like to, to to communicate to ourselves in the future that we really did want that rather than just making it up um, and the minify and magnify are both nearest so minify filter 
nearest magnify filter nearest. I'm going to bring those down a couple of new lines so it's easier for me to read them. And that is that. So that is all of that code done. All right. Okay, so now this is all the data we need. So, okay, this is pretty cool. Let's just make sure that this works. And if it does, then we're going to commit this. Yep, there we go. Um, let's, seeing as we've got a sampler, let's just make a little variable for this quickly. Def var temp zero, shove that in it. And we're going to go up to our draw text thing that we've got up here. We're going to copy that quickly. And we're going to say temp zero. Freaking out, man! What's this? Um, invalid index zero for simple array, single float one. What have I done? Have I typed something stupid? Let's just put this back a second and see what I've done. Okay, that's fine. does not like that. It does not like it at all. Hold up a second. I saw something stupid. Um, let's put this back and continue because this is a texture 1D. Why is this a texture 1D? Did I not recompile this? I really got a bug in my. No, that's a Vec 3 4x4. Four four. That's a sample of one. What the shit? Texture 2D. Gen weird noise. Gen weird noise text. Let's comment this out for a second and just return text. Texture 4x4. Texture 4x4. I hadn't recompiled something. Well, fuck you for confusing me, but we're good now. Okay, so let's try this again. Recompile everything. Uh, gen weird noise text. Then we're going to set f temp 0 to be that. And we are going to go back to that draw text do that there and then we should see bam we've got a little um texture four by four texture um and you can see that we're getting these really hard edges between the pixels um or the texels rather in that texture um and the reason for that is that we put that um, nearest so this even though this has been stretched up to a larger size when it's sampling from that texture it's doing nearest clamping so it's not interpolating between the um the pixels um hey princess rika Okay, Cram said, did anyone here do anything for the game jam? I, there's quite a few people who are doing entries. It's quite cool. I need to get down and actually play some of them. Um, but yes, so we have... Um, here you can see some of them are just black, and that's because these are negative numbers, and so they're going to be clamped. Um, we could fuck with it in some way. Ah, no, let's not go into that. We, we know what those values are going to be, and if we're worried about it, um, what we could do is we can say, hey, temp zero, um, get the sampler text from that. Why is that not the name of that function? Why would I call it anything else than what I want to call it right now? Um, because it's called sample texture, Chris. Grab the sample texture and then we just do a pull G on that and we can see, look, negative numbers in places. So one, two, so our second one there. Not sure the order of this. See, I would have expected one of these to be all negative. So if both of them are negative, this is going to be black anyway. So yeah, that's good. All is good. We can continue on. Um, let's actually look, bring up temp zero and just free that. Free! Oh, how dare you? 
Is that going to be... Oh, yeah. I just freed the thing I'm trying to draw. So let's not do that. Um, that's much better. Right, okay. Nice. So now we've tested it. We need to commit for the sake of Medellin. And other people. But we love Medellin. So this should be done. Um, yeah. Make... Um, Kernel and noise data. Boop, boop, boop. That's gone. Um, let's see what else we have to do. Did it go? Yeah, it's gone. There we go. Cool. Nice. We're not even an hour in. Okay, so now we, now we finally get to the cool bit. The SSAO shader. Okay. This isn't the shader. This is the stuff to call the shader. Rubbish. I hate it. Throw it all away. Okay, so the SSO shader runs on a 2D screen fill quad that calculates the occlusion value for each of the generated fragments for use in final in, in the final lighting shader. As we need to store the result of the SSAO stage, we need yet another frame buffer object. Let us go and make yet another frame buffer object. What have we got here? How many attachments? There is one color attachment and there is no mention of a depth attachment at all, which is interesting. So that should be quite easy to make. It's a color buffer. What are the... Okay, so it's float, it's RGB, and it's red. So it's just a single... Now, this is the bit I've got to remember. Now, is this... Does this red mean R8? Which would mean it's an 8-bit integer, but like normalized to a float kind of thing. Yes, this is like an 8-bit float, or is this a... I don't know. Ah, stuff is paying the butt. Okay, so GL text image 2D. Really? No, I don't... Oh, fuck. Really? Yeah, ignored that legal agreement. And it's recorded. Excellent. Right. So, um, what have we got here? We have red RGB float. So type is float. RGB, so this is a VEC3 of some sort. But it's a, uh, the internal format in table one. Let's go check table one. Okay, so this is just saying the number of components. So this should just be, ah, oh, this is fucking hell. Okay, so when they say RGB, In the internal, fucking hell, there we go. Format, no, internal format is here. That's table two. Okay, right, it's got to be one of the, one of table one, two, or three. So let's go and have a look. Table one, red, which is R, which I thought. GL will choose an internal representation that closely approximates the requested internal format, but it may not match exactly the representation specified. Red, all these must match exactly. Um, what does that mean about the size of the data, though? Each element, so is this to do with, okay, so format determines the composition of each element in data. So the format here, this is for the pixel data, so this is what you'd be uploading and downloading, I think? Oh, I hate these format things. Anyway, what we can do is just do... Um, yeah, we'll see, what, <laughs> we'll see where we go with this. Because they say RGB for the... So if I remember correctly, format specifies 
a lot more of the layout. So this is more saying it is one component. Oh, fuck's sake. Number of color components. Okay, that's the color components one. So that just red just means one color component. Formats, the format of the pixel data. I thought that was to do with upload and download because that's where pixels really come into things. So let's skip over that. And type is GL float. And type, it specifies the type of the pixel data. Oh, God damn it. Okay. What we can do though is just say float because that's a single a single thing so let's go I will actually catch up with the chat real soon um, so make FBO we're going to specify that this is a this is the color attachment attachment zero um, we want it to have an element type um, of float and that's all we need to do to tell it to do that um, yeah, that would actually do it. Kevl really tries to give you back something valid, even if you don't provide all the information. So it's going to take the dimensions from the current viewport. It's going to take... Um, it's going to have made a texture to bind to the attachment. All that kind of stuff. So that is good. So let's do... Defo SSBO... FBO, that's going to be nil, and we're going to have a sampler for that as well. Which is nil. Let's do those. Then we need to go down to where we recreate everything da, 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 in FBOs. And yes, we're going to say set F SSBO FBO to that. And then we are going to, uh, whoops, come on Alcus, set F, SSBO sampler to sampling the attachment texture from SSBO FBO and it's attachment zero, which is the color buffer zero. Yeah, so that's fine. Cool. Um, that's all we need. And then we're just going to do reset FBOs. And now if we look at SSBO sampler, well, this is BO FBO, it's populated. And sampler is also populated. Check out the size. Let's have a look at that texture. You can see it's an R32F. So it's a floating point texture. Still not convinced that's right, but we will see. Oh, this is interesting. So yes, yeah, so there's some discussion on what to use for plotting and stuff like this. Um, fuck you. Jesus Christ, this is, what is all this? Free GBL library of commonest code for doing data analysis. Oh, that's kind of cool. Available via QuickLisp. And you were saying that it's its own system? Oh, nice. Okay, so... Um, let's have a look. Plotting. So hopefully there's an ASD in here. Nice. Depends on a bunch of the other stuff, of course. Well, that's kind of interesting. Where does it plot it to when it's doing draw? What does that draw mean? That's interesting. That sounds handy, though. Oh, you're on the list of things to read. Okay, done. But we can't do it now. Okay, so we've made our FBO. Let's try not to think about it too much. Um, yeah, this is just making the attachment thing.
Cool, right. So, as the ambient occlusion is a single grayscale value, we'll only need um, textures red component, thus we set it to red. Uh, the complete process for rendering SSAO looks a bit like this. So you're going to bind the frame buffers, yada, yada, we know how to do that, that's fine, it's easy and capable. Um, we're clearing, they're, they're having to do all this stuff with textures, we don't have to do that. They're running the program, fine. Um, oh, there's a projection matrix that's passed in, fine. I'm rendering a quad, yeah, this isn't too helpful to us. To us, this is going to be a couple of lines, so that's fine. Um, here we go. This is where we're actually getting into the SSAO shader, so let's have a look at what it takes. So this is the fragment shader. So we should really go and start writing some of this down. Defon G, um, don't suppose we have to pass through here. So um, SSBO vert is gonna be very simple. It's gonna take a vert, which is a vec2. We've done this a thousand times, but I'll still do it wrong. Um, it's going to be between minus one and one, which means we can pass it straight through. Um, it's a VEC4, that's fine. Um, and then, but we're also going to need some UVs, probably. Well, I normally need UVs anyway, so let's do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, swizzle, vert, down to get it to XY, which is the actual bits we need. And then we're just going to multiply this, um, no, uh, yeah, by 0.5 and add 0.5 and that's going to shift it from 1 to minus 1 um, to minus 0.5 to 0.5 and then plus 0.5 which is going to shift it in the 0 to 1 range so that should be fine um, then we're going to defund g and this is going to be ssbo frag and this is where things are going to start getting interesting so we're passing in uh, those text chords excellent that is what we needed so let's call them text chords um, and it's going to be a VEC2. That's great. Um, and then it looked like there are a bunch of uniforms. So let's go and see what we've got here. We've got the position, normal, and noise samples. So, um, yeah, Postex. It's not really the texture, but whatever. Um, norm text and noise text. And all three of these are um, sampler 2D, so that is good. Um, then we've got the array of samples, array of 64 uh, samples. It's kind of interesting that we're passing them just up as a uniform array. I should do that because I very rarely test this. What I might do is shove them in a UBO though. In fact, it's actually probably just shove, better to shove them in a UBO anyway because otherwise we're uploading them every time we call. That sounds like ass. So let's not do that. Okay, so um, samples, um, we're going to store them in a, yeah, we're gonna do this slightly differently then. How are we gonna do this? We are going to devstruct, I get it, devstruct G, sample data, um, no, so we'll just call it um, Hemi samples, because this is for our hemisphere. And there's going to be data, which is going to be a an array of vector three, if I remember correctly. Let's go and have a look at that again. Play with verts, go down to our kernel points. Yes, they're all vector threes. And we are going to have 64 of them, so let's do that. And that's fine. I think that's all we need for that. Yes. That should be good. And now we can say that samples is going to be hemi samples, but it's going to be a UBO. And then Kev will take care of a bunch of stuff for us. There's also a projection matrix. Okay. Um, let's call it projection. And it's a map four. It's going to be a map four, not map three, Chris. There we go. And then there is this value, which we'll deal with in a second. Let's just copy that in. Noise scale. Uh, 
Ah, this is based on the on the screen being that size, but that's not the case. Okay, so we actually need the uh, screen res as well. And then it turns out that this is just screen res divided by um, four. Cool. Don't know why we're doing that in the shader rather than just down on the CPU side. That seems completely bonkers actually. Oh yeah, I mean he's got like, there's a constant there, but that's going to be changing, so we really need to care about that. Um, Medigan saying, "How about using the Keppel built-in plotting you were using in the earlier episodes?" I should use that. The reason I didn't actually was just I can't remember the API off the top of my head, and I never documented it, so I'd have to spend time looking at that stuff again. Um, so yeah, so that wasn't the best best move on my part. Plots with GNU plot invoked as subprocesses. Um, default GNU plot backend should pop up an interactive window with just the plot and some controls. That's really nice. You can tell CLANA to set up the GNU plot backend explicitly to do things like save an image with the plot. Don't think it supports 3D plots yet. The last I checked, it was over half a year ago. That's interesting. <laughs> But yes, we do need to get back to some of our plotting stuff. We need more. I really want more introspection and debug tools around Keppel. One of the things we are going to do in one of the episodes is play with RenderDoc, which is awesome. Um, I know some chaps who are already using it with Lisp. Um, it is an incredible piece of software. Go check it out. Uh, but it allows you to very deeply inspect what you're doing with your uh, GPU. Um, and do all these live captures and stuff like this and check the timeline and see what you're doing with all your stages. This thing is going to be really helpful, um, but we need to learn how to use it first. So that's going to be a fun episode. Also, I can't remember who was doing this, but someone was making integration, like very basic integration as well. And I'm sorry, because I know you showed me what you were doing the other day and you're probably in the chat, but I've forgotten already who that was, but I did bookmark it. Um, Jason's saying, uh-oh, <laughs> what's wrong with that? But that'd be really cool. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, distractions to distractions and things to do. Interesting to note here is noise scale. Okay, yes, it's just justifying why we need that scale. Um, yeah. So now that we're going to get the values out of... Oh, let's not do that. Let's put this down below. We're going to unpack the values from our um, from our samplers here. So let's do that. Um, frag pos, sure. Texture. Um, I'm going to call this view pos actually because it's just easier for me to deal with. So view pos is pos text at the text chords. And apparently we just need this as XYZ. So we'll swizzle it to XYZ. Um, same with this for normal, norm text, um, and uh, noise. So randvec is noise text um, at texture chords times. Noise scale. Um, I'm just going to bring this down, and that's what we're doing there. So that's okay. That's those three. Nothing to see here, really. You're just unpacking. We've got the tangent by tangent TBN thing. Okay. So this is, hmm. Together with the frank plus and normal vector, we have enough data to create a TBN matrix to transform any vector from tangent space to view space. Cool. And we talk we were talking about our hemispheres in tangent space. So this will be this is what we need. So let's just go and create this as well. We're going to do a TBN. This is the oh no, Gram Schmidt. Gram Schmidt stuff. Tangent is 
normalize. Just got to do some typing. Randvec minus normal. Uh, except that's not quite right, is it? It's times normal and then the dot product of Randvec and normal. Groovy, and then by tangent is the cross product of the normal and the tangent. And the TBN matrix is the mat3 of, which is not how I write those. How do I write those? I can't remember. Um, so we do M3 from, um, oh, that's the question now, isn't it? It's from columns or from rows? I guess it's from columns. Um, let's just look at mat3, so gl mat, so gl, cell mat3, um, yeah, but what about the constructor, constructor, there we go, yes, matrix constructors, column major order, yes, yeah, so let's just say that from columns, I think that'll be it. Bari matrices matrix three Consing. Um from columns. Yeah, we're just doing mat three. Okay, that's fine. That's what we want. And we're doing tangent by tangent normal. Cool. So that's our two view space matrix. That's great. Or was it? Yeah. No. Shit, which way was it around? I always forget. God damn it. Yeah, tangent space to view space. That's correct. Okay, so we won't go through into the logic behind this for now. We just got to keep on plowing on because it is quarter past nine and we're still coding. Let's keep going. So next we iterate over each of the, the kernel samples, transform the samples from tangent to view space and add them to the current fragment position. Compare the blah, 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 blah. Okay, this should be easy. Whoop. Oh, he's going to do it step by step. Fine. Let's uh, let's just keep coding. Um, so we're going to have an occlusion factor, which starts at zero. Um, we're going to then loop across this. So, um, uh, how do I write this in this system? I is zero. And then the test is less than i kernel size, um, which in this case is actually hard coded. So let's just put that here. Kernel size is um, 64. Um, and then we can do um, plus plus i. I think I've done it like that. Inkfi or whatever it is. We can check the code. Let's have a look. Okay, so get the sample position. So we're going to do let star. Oops. Sample is times our TBN matrix with a ref of. Samples. Okay, so we're passing in our samples as hemi samples up here. So we actually want to do hemi samples data. Samples, it's hemi samples data of um, what we've called it samples. Okay, that's a bit stupid naming, but oh well. Um, Call it array. Arif array by i. Um, we multiply that by the TBN. That gives us our sample. And then we say sample equals fragpos plus sample times radius. Okay, so we then take this and multiply it by radius, which we haven't even mentioned yet. And we add that 
to frag pos, which is actually view pos in our thing. So, okay, let's go with that. Oh boy. Let's have a look. Um, actually, what we can do is we could move kernel size out. But no, let's, let's keep going with this for now. Okay, so we're getting some details. Um, oh, Jason's saying that was you. Yes, thank you so much for doing that. We will try it on stream and it will break. <laughs> It'll be fine. CL render doc is sitting on the back burner waiting for me for eventually to, uh, to manually wrap tons of stuff. No problem, man. Their API is really annoying. The only static function you get, you call to get a pointer. Wait a second. The only static function you call to get a pointer to a structure function pointers. And CL order wrap can't generate wrappers for those functions. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. But you can trigger a capture and open the inspector UI. I mean, that's a great start. Like, if we can just get that fast, we can see, like, in their, like, capture thing, what is going on. That'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. Because that's a lot of tooling that we would just have then. That would have really helped when we were screwing up the terrain stuff we did long, 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 long time ago. Okay, right. Where do we get to? Um, here, kernel size and radius are variables we can use to tweak the effect. In this case, 64 and 0.5 respectively. Tweak. For each iteration, we first transform the respective samples, um, the respective sample to view space. We then add the view space kernel um, offset sample to the view space fragment position. Then we multiply the offset sample by radius to increase or decrease the effective. Ugh, okay, fine. Whew, quite a bit. Yes, we um, we take our hemisphere that's in tangent space, we rotate it. We scale it to the size that we care about, which is this radius, and then we're good to go. Next, we want to transform sample to screen space so we can sample the position depth of sample as if we were using, um, if we were rendering its position directly to the screen. As the vector is currently in view space, we'll transform it to clip space using the projection matrix. Um, we need our projection matrix, which is here. Um, in our other stages, we called this view to clip. And I kind of want to call it view to clip down here. So now I'm going to say offset is sample 1.0. Um, we're going to then, oh, let's just use the names then. We keep going with offset. Offset now is um, times view to clip by offset, sure. Um, I th this is one of those times I think it's completely fine just to put this right here. Let's do that. Um, we're going to modify it now again anyway. Um, that's interesting. They do the perspective divide, but they only do it on three components. And then they... Wait a second, that's interesting. And then they... Hold on, I'm trying to process this one. Because the perspective divide should make the W component one. That's kind of the idea. You're dividing by W and everything shrinks down and now W is irrelevant. Do they then use W for something else? So now I just want to check this off, set dot. No, okay. So we do not need to just multiply part of the vector. That doesn't seem worth it. Let's just do offset. Um, divided by the W component of offset. There, we're good. Um, that's our perspective divide that happens automatically in a stage. We're running out of light here in Norway. Let me just pop this on. And it's going to just go all over the place, but that's fine. Slightly moody lighting, but it'll work. Um, got some like, like reasonably... I thought decent LED bulbs that are meant to be like, they've got a 10 year lifespan, but of course the LEDs probably do, but the circuitry that's running them is shit. So it lasts just outside of warranty. 
And then they all die. So I've got to go and replace a bunch of bulbs in here. That's why everything's a tad darker than it should be, even though it's yeah, it's getting on a bit. We're at 20 past 9. Focus, Chris. We've got to do stuff. Okay, so we've done the perspective divide. This gets us into normalized device coordinate. It, yeah, to normalize device coordinates, I think. And then we've got to transform, do this final transform here, which puts us into view space. Into where it, uh, screen space, sorry. I think that's correct. We probably have this down here. Yes, we do. Um, screen space pos is. Um, why are you doing this? I'm so confused. Wait a second. <laughs> this is really odd. They use sample Z. They don't use sample. Strange people. All right. We're going to swizzle out offset X, Y, Z. And we're going to multiply it by 0.5. And then we're going to add 0.5 to it. I really need to add the re... I think I've got remapping functions in um, Nivea, but I just... In Nivea? No. Nineveh. There we go. Um, but I don't use them. I really need to remember what they are and use them rather than just writing out the long hand because it's clearer to read than this stuff because you've got to remember which way okay, it's times 0.5 okay we're shrinking it so we're probably going from minus 1 to 1 down to 1 to 0 like 0 to 1 rather Blah. okay after the variable is transformed to clip space we perform the perspective divide step um, the resulting normalized device coordinates are then transformed into the 0 to 1 range we can use to sample the position texture so, depth. Why did I do that? That's just going to be harder to write than if I'd just done it longhand. But anyway, um, post text, we're going to sample that at swizzle offset xy, and then we're going to get the z coordinate out of it. Jesus. Drop this down to the next line so it's a little easier to read in this crowded screen. Okay, yeah, we're getting the Z coordinate of the texture that we're meant to be sampling, which is not just that we're sampling this texture at this position. We're grabbing Z into here. That's our depth. Of, um, so now we can compare that. Oh, and apparently we need a bias as well. Okay, um, let's have a look at this. So the occlusion factor. This is where it gets nice. Um, so we're going to increment occlusion by this. We say if sample depth is greater than or equal to sample.z, so we do z of sample, um, then, oh yeah, plus a bias, then we're going to return 1, else we're going to return 0, and these should be floats, so like that, and yeah, that's how I'm going to leave it, okay, so that should then be our for loop. This bias, we're going to set it to this. So let's go and stick that in ours. Bias is there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, this is really what, where I want to get to today. We want to get to this point with the SSAO stuff working. That would be really cool. And it might be possible. Um, and then we're going to do the rest another week. But this is the most important bit. This is where hopefully we see something. But if it breaks, we probably won't get it fixed today, and we'll start that next week.
and that's fine. Okay, so um, it should know even that they're using a ternary operator here and we're using if. Vario will look at this and, and just go, hey, if this is pure um, and there are certain other characteristics about it to do with complexity of the expression, um, it'll just use a ternary operator anyway. Otherwise, it will split it out to a full if. Um, yeah. There's something I'm slightly missing here. And that's, they're adding to this occlusion thing, but what the fuck are they doing with it? Like, they haven't decided yet. Where's the output? Okay, that's this bit here. We're not completely finished yet, as there's still a small issue we have to take into account. When a fragment is tested for ambient occlusion that is aligned close to the edge of the surface, it will also consider depth values of surfaces far behind the test surface. These values will correctly contribute to the occlusion factor. We can solve this by introducing a range check as the following image shows. So, look, a range check. We get less of this shadowing around the edges. Hurrah. Um, we change the last line to this. Okay, so, so this has to change. Thanks, guys. All right, let's do that. So range check is going to be here, range check, we're going to use smooth step, um, which is going to go from 0 to 1, and then the last bit is radius divided by ABS of the difference between the Z of fragment position of fragpos, which is viewpos and sample depth. So I'm going to call this R diff and then just move this up here. It's a little bit easier to read that way. Cool. So R diff, range check, and then we use that down here. All we do is like whatever we do here, we multiply by range check. Okay, that's cool. Seems palatable. And I'm going to get into why on this another point. Okay, so now... Oof. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. As a final step, we'll normalize the occlusion contribution by the size of the kernel and the output results. Note that we subtract the occlusion factor from 1, so we can directly use the occlusion factor to scale the ambient lighting component. Nice. That's this here. So after all of this, we go, hey, um, well, we just do the result value, which is 1 minus occlusion divided by kernel size and that should be our result but that can't be quite right now can it because frag color is going to be a vector 4 and this is not does that automatically get promoted how does that work let's go have a look up here out is a float from a fragment shader that doesn't sound right can you do that I guess you can. Um, yeah, because we are... I know that we're just returning a single float like into the texture. I'm just surprised. Anyway, let's let's get back up here. Let's see what we get. Let's. Um, I'm, just, I'm gonna put this into a VEC4 anyway. Um, I swear I had a thing for this. Didn't I just have VEC4? Was asked to swiggle, sw swiggle, swizzle a value of type float. That's really not the most helpful error because it doesn't tell me what it was trying to swizzle. Um, oh yeah, look at this. Offset is just divide by w offset. That's no good. That's not correct, is it? It must be. This is our. We got it into our view space, and then we were trying to put it into NDC device coordinate. NDC device coordinate that's like Sahara Desert. Normalized device coordinate coordinate. Um, 
Yeah, we got it to NDC here, and then we remapped it here to get it into screen space. Yes. Um, oh, this is wrong. We're using offset down here, and we actually wanted to be using this. And I, this is all my fault because, yeah, because I gave it a different name than was in their code, and then I copied their code and wondered why it won't work. Okay, so do that. Um, abort that. This actually compiles now. Hurrah! So, technically, we have a vertex and a fragment shader, so we should try and make a pipeline out of this. So, dev, pipeline, g, this is ssao, um, pipeline. Um, I don't know what to put in the context information, so I'm going to ignore that for now. Um, just see if there's anything I'm not thinking of. No, we just need to go ssao vert which takes a vec2, come on man, an SSAO frag, which also takes a vec2, because you only have to worry about the um, types of, what do I call it? SSBO, that's not what that is. Ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion. There we go. Okay, so we've got a pipeline now, that's dope. Let's try and do something with it, holy cow. A lot of stuff. Whew. So now we need to render. Yeah, we need to render this scene. Let's go and get play with verts up because that's where we're going to be doing it. Um, there's a few things we're missing actually because we made a slight change in that we're passing up our hemisphere samples as a UBO. So we're going to need that UBO. Um, so let's go up here and do um, def var. Hemi samples um, is going to be nil, but then we're going to have to populate that and reset. Let's just go blurp. Um, set of hemi samples to be, in fact, let's free hemi samples for when hemi samples, free hemi samples, and then down here we're going to go. Um, in fact, that's a good point. I didn't free that FBO either. Don't free the samples. Oh, there's garbage left out everywhere. Never mind. Um, free the sampler, free the FBO, create new ones. Fine. Where was I? What was I meant to be doing? Hemi. Hemi samples. There we go. We're going to free the Hemi samples. Then we're going to do this. And how do we do this? We're going to do make UBO. Um, our data. Our data is going to be um, foo. Um, and our element type is optional, so we don't need to type element type. What do we need to do? We need to say it's called hemi samples. And we should just be able to pass in a list of arrays. I think that's how it works. So then, um, I'm going to move this down into its own function. One second. Devon. Gen kernel points um, UBO number of points. Sure, why not? Um, we're creating a C array, so we're going to do with C array freed again. We're going to call it C array. We're going to do gen kernel points and pass in the number of points, and then we'll make a UBO, which is just I think we just have to pass a list with that C array in, and that will get uploaded into that place. I think that's right. Not entirely sure. Um, and call it Hemi samples. Let's see what that does if we run it. And let's just make this optional because we know what we're passing in here. Right? We're going to be using 64. Like we can't even change this at the moment. So it's the only sensible thing to do. Right. Doesn't like that. Um, it's not of type or cons null array. That's interesting. So at the moment, if you try and provide the data like that, it doesn't like it. That's okay. We can do this another way. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to keep that C array there. We're going to make a UBO. Um, 
and the data is going to be nil. I think we can do that. Let's, let's try that. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Oh no, that's the ID. I thought that was the length for a second. Okay. And then if we did UBO data, cover that last thing, we get a GPU array of dimension one. Yes, with that hemi sample type, and it's backed by a pub. This is perfect. This is what we want. So let's result is going to be our UBO. And then what do we get back? We got a GPU array, so we can go with GPU array bound, I think is probably the best way to do that. GPU array as C array. Oh yes, actually we're gonna do this slightly differently and it's going to be good. So the GPU array is C array, uh, temp is gonna be C array and we'll see why in a second. Res is going to be, um, is this the way to do it? Sorry, I'm just gonna ponder this one out a second. UBO array, right, let's do that. And then ARFC of UBO array zero is gonna get us the struct. Um, and then we're going to use hemi samples, hemi samples um, data. And that should get us the C array I think we can just push one C array to another. So let's just do, oh, what is it? There's a copy G, I think. Yeah, copy G, source destination. This is awesome. Okay, so we do C array to that. The other way we could do it is we could take that C array. Yeah, I kind of like that. So quick refactor, pop, number of points, C array. This C array is going away. Um, bang. And we'll do this. Um, yeah, we'll return the we'll return the CRA again. Why not do that? I think that's cool. Then we can do this. We'll do rather than gen kernel points, we'll go populate kernel points. We pass in the number of points, and we pass in the hemi samples data array. Hopefully. Oh, no, that's not needed anymore. Okay, so let's let's review. We create a UBO here. We get its data. Is that correct? Wait a second. GPU array here is going to be UBO data of res. Yeah, there we go. We grab its data, which is a GPU array. Um, we bind it as a C array to this variable. Then we get the first element out of it, which is going to be the array of points, this data here. And then we pass that C array into this function, which is gonna run through and populate it with this number of points, and we're done. That sounds cool. Will it work though? Yes. Hot damn. Okay, so let's do, can you do a pull G straight on a UBO? Yes, you can. Look at that, fucking gorgeous. Oh, I love computers. Right, okay. Um, okay, so then we go and find what we were doing originally, which is setting up hemi samples. And now we just do this. Yeah, great. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Any samples is done. Now we can work out how to call this thing. So, where are we? Where are we at all? Uh, SSAO pass. Okay, so we're going to do a with FBO pound. Uh, pound? Bound. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me check the chat because I have been rambling and I'm sorry I haven't been checking out chat for a bit. Um, Arsus, does it even make a difference for Capital to generate? A, oh yeah, a um, ternary um, if instead of an if. Yes, it can do, very rarely. It depends on the compiler. There are cases where apparently 
some GLSL compilers will turn it into a C move instead of a full if, which can have a difference because you're doing things like essentially your GPU is running shit ton of SIMD code. So you're doing these wide vectors. So then rather than having to do a mask, you're just, yeah, there's a conditional move rather than a mask. And I can't remember exactly how that works, but apparently it's a little faster. In some cases it matters. I, I Yeah. When did that come up? I can find out. What time have we got? 20 minutes. Yeah, let's go find it. Um, I'm on the wrong machine for be doing that. For be doing that. I am the English. Um, the works, Nineveh, um, rep. Sure. Um. <laughs> I love those comments. But why? Um, I can't remember what functions it was. Yeah, it was some code I got from somewhere else that was then, like, there was a kind of discussion between two people when they were optimizing, and this thing came up on, like, hey, you can use the ternary operator here, and this gets converted into CMove. Hooray! Sometimes this is faster. Very device-specific, I would expect. Okay, let's, let's do this. SSBO, FBO is now going to be bound. We are then going to call MapG on this pipeline, the SSAO pipeline, which is cool. And we're going to pass in the quad that we use for so much stuff. It is the get uh, quad stream vec2. There we are. Um, and now we have to pass up our uniforms. And the ones we really care about are... Well, these ones are definitely important to start with. This is Postex. Um, and this is going to be... This is all going to be stuff from our gbuffer, right? So let's let's go and grab things from our gbuffer. So with slots, um, we've got our gbuffer. Ugh, Chris, what are you doing? Okay. Oh, there it is. Idiot. So let's look at the things we have here. Do that, we should be able to do this, clear that, bring those down. And then, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Cool. Um, do you even want to do it like that? I don't know. So POSTEX is actually going to be a sampler, the POS sampler. We have the norm text which is the norm sampler. We have the noise text, um, which is going to be, have we even, have we created a variable for that yet? I don't think we have. It's this one down here though. So it'll be easy to set up. Um, def var ss, ugh, called it ssbo again, idiot. Um, ssao noise. Um, is nil. Let's go set that up and reset. When SSAO noise, then free SSAO noise. Um, there'll be some details there as well. Gen with noise text. Um, set up SSAO noise. So that, if we look at that, it's It is sampling the texture. So this is actually going to be a sampler. So I actually want to jump up and make this reflect that. Okay. Um, I also actually want to free not just the sampler, but the texture from the sampler. So sampler text. Um, sure. And then we free the sampler itself. That's good. What else do we need to do? Um, well, I suppose we should run this now just to make sure that is fine. That's our, sorry, I did that really fast. SSAO noise sampler, blam, is our 4x4 texture. So that's there. That's our noise texture going in. What else do we need? We need our UBO, um, so our hemi samples. 
So samples. Why did we just call it samples? That was dumb. Um, is Emmy samples? Yes. That's going to be our UBO. We should... No, don't rename this right now. Just keep going. Um, view to clip is going to be whatever our view to clip matrix is. Let's go and look at draw because it's probably in there. You can see view to clip is projection of the camera. So we can use that. I'm assuming camera is passed around here pretty liberally. There it is, current camera. Don't need that to say that twice. Okay, so that's good. And then screen res is a VEC2. And I do believe we already have that around here somewhere. Really? We don't have that just in the variable knocking around? That's kind of dumb. Cool, it's that. So now screen res can be res. <sighs> That's a lot of stuff, but maybe it'll work. Um, let's try it. Okay, so it didn't crash, but are we still rendering? No, we're not. So let's try running again. And we've got some problems. Okay, so the primary number... Oh, the primary return value from vertex stage must be a VEC4 instead of VEC2 was found. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Um, let's uh, go and look at... Play with verts a second. Get quad stream V2. That's correct. That's a vert2. Which means this needs to be a VEC4. Which means we didn't need to do this swizzle here. Okay, so when I was saying, we've done this a thousand times, but you still can't do it right, Chris. That's the problem. Let's try that. Okay, we're rendering again. That's actually really good. Um, that is really exciting. So if we take this out, because that was just us checking to see our normal sampler, what happens now? Okay, so we want to go draw text, and we want to go and draw the SS BO sampler. It's not SSBO, but whatever. Huh. Well, it's not amazing, and it looks noisy, but there's something going on there. Let's, um... Let's change this up. So, how's the best way of viewing this? Let's um, let's go and screw with the uh, SA. Oh, actually, before we do anything else, here's a, here's a few things we can do. Um, let's, fuck, let's stage what we've done, because we're going to need to commit this in a second. Um, I really want to change these things that say SSBO into SSAO. Everything is going to break. Right, I'm going to do this. Then we're going to get error saying, what the fuck are you talking about? And um, then we're going to do a reset. E. Oh, dear. No, I didn't like that, did it? Um, reset. Ugh. Okay. Let's clear the screen a second. Um, let's call free. Wait a second, I know. That's kind of strange, actually. Let's compile that. Reset. Where is that freaking out? Reset FBO. FBOs. Oh yeah, there's this. When, oh yeah. When that, that. Okay, abort. Where are you, you fuck? Yeah, it's this one. 
Oh, yeah, because that says scene FBR. There we go. That explains it. Okay, so now we're back in business again. And it still looks shitty, but let's go and let's commit this before I do anything else wrong. Um, is it working? It doesn't look too great. Um, it looks really noisy. Um, but we're going to go to render and we're going to screw with this value a bit so we can see something a bit more substantial. So, let's just... No, of course not. Two. Now that's just pushing it out. Okay, so rather than doing that, let's uh, raise it to the power of something. Yeah, there we go. So we can see, we can see at least that our object is in some way, like, relevant here. And that texture on the back almost seems to be related to the bricks at the back. Like if we go to... Switch out the normal sample for the albedo sampler. And we uh, do this. Yeah. That pattern seems to be... Well, the there's a really kind of regular grid that probably isn't showing up very well in the... Um, in the stream. I don't know, man. But you know what? There are bits that it's slightly darker around some of the features. I just don't like this uniform kind of grid noise that's over everything. It's really strange. It just looks like shit stippling. Um... It's almost not visible in the stream. Yeah, I imagine that was a... Like, how about that? Does that show up a bit better? Um, Jace is saying... Um, push some simple docs in the form of a readme to render doc. Nice. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, we've got something, but I'm not happy with the result yet but we're just gonna have to let it be there and we will have to keep going because what else can you do saying that there is a really fine fucking noise that's on this hey look it still doesn't look perfect as perfect as the repeating text pattern of the noise texture is clearly visible that's good to create a smooth ambient occlusion result we need to blur the ambient occlusion texture that's fucking great. That's really nice when we kind of get freaked out by an artifact and they tell us about it. I don't see it as much in the other parts, but I think that might be because the normals in this are really, like, they're not putting the normal maps in. I wonder if we're not meant to do that. That would be interesting. Maybe we're not meant to put, like, the normal map data into here. Maybe we're just meant to use the, the view space normal. That would be an interesting thing. We've got to test that. Manian says, in reset, freeing, and setting SSA and noise instead of... Oh, I love you, man. Look at you. Saving the day. Because that would have confused the shit out of me for a while. SSAO noise. Thank you. That's so cool. Oh, not today. That's cool. Okay. So we get a, a bunch, we get a more of that grid artifact than they seem to. Um, so we're gonna, they're going to do a blur. Yet another frame buffer for the blur. Um, excuse me. They use a very simple blur kernel for that. What time are we? We're 2154. We're not going to get that done right now. So what we could do in these last few minutes is um, let's Median fixes. Uh, oops. Did we actually put 
push up in that. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Um, we could have a look at not passing in uh, the normal from our normal map and just using the normal the view space normal. This is gonna be pretty severe, but we'll do it anyway. Let's well actually no, let's let let's do both. Let's pass along and then we can just switch it across. So the way we're gonna do that, we're just gonna do model pos, so it says world pos, view pos shit, like this. Um, so we're gonna take the normal, um, we're gonna take the world norm 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 we're playing creatures again norm view normal good right and then we're going to shove it down here right on the end and then here we're going to um no we don't need to do that okay so this is in that common function where everything is done both of these use that so our frag stage now has to take a view norm which is a VEC3, I would hope. Uh, but it's probably not, is it? Normal is a VEC3. Yes, but that means we need to... Because um, this is a map matrix 4. We need a, um, ah, what's the thing for M4 um, is 2 map 3. There we go, perfect. Take the model to world, because um, we don't need positioning, we just need rotation. Um, and then world to view is a map 4. I think we can do the same thing here. Who knows? Uh, to map 3 on that. Normal, world normal, world normal, to view normal, view normal, to down here. View normal then lands down in here here and we've got it so let's just recompile this is going to freak out because i just haven't updated um these pipelines which now take an extra vec3 everything is now fine so we can come up here to our view normal and what happens if we just like if we just comment out these two things Okay, so I'm going to change that shader again so we can see it a bit more dramatically by raising everything to the power of 5. Okay, so there's our thing with a grid. Let me know if that's not visible. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to... Where is it? This stuff here. Okay, so we uncomment this. And then we get a lot of extra noise around here. But I think it actually didn't make much difference to the floor or the wall. No, we still get this pattern. Okay, so really we just get this pattern fucking everywhere. I'm just surprised that this looks so much more severe. Like even... Actually, let's do that out for a second. Like... Obviously, we've stuck this exponent in here, which we shouldn't really have. But like, even without it, there's more kind of noise around here than I'm seeing in any of this shit. Like, I'm only getting it around there. So I'm not sure what's going on. I've got a feeling like our occlusion factor is too high here for some reason. I don't get it. But we'll find out for sure over the next uh, week. Because we are coming... Wow, we're actually on time uh, for the end of the episode now. And we did get through um this bit which we definitely wanted to do so that's really cool so next time we're going to do the blur and then we are going to um apply this it's interesting as well actually because there one you, you get you get a really defined thing here ours is actually very slight which is kind of worrying like is this just not a very uh Like, I suppose this is more defined. Like, in this area here, that's actually pretty dope. All this stuff here that we're seeing, this is... this is Like, if we didn't have our ambient occlusion, we would see nothing here, right? 
So all of this is just the darkening around there that looks like it makes sense. That's all because um, our thing is doing roughly what it's meant to. But I'm seeing way more noise in places I wouldn't expect it. Um, so I don't know. Unless it's just that their scene is so fucking flat and featureless um, that it doesn't get this for some reason. We'll see. But this is dope. Okay, so that actually went really well. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm going to add the normal map stuff back in because why not? Um, we'll make one last commit for the day, which is um, add um, view space norm um, from vertex stage for debug. Wanted to see how it would compare. Oops. Lovely. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, if you've got any questions, I will have a sip of coffee while I'm waiting for those to come in. And uh, yeah, that actually went really well. So we will we will obviously carry on with this next week. Um, and we will get that blur implemented. Then we're going to see about applying this back to the actual scene and see what difference it makes um, to the actual effect. And that's really cool. Um, coffee. Excellent. All right, folks. Thanks so much. I will catch you next time. Peace.